danger. I'll be doing reactions that produce deadly fumes and handling corrosive acids in this video. Doing these reactions without proper safety equipment could cause serious injury or death. Welcome to part five of the 25 tray ounce bar refining. I've got the gold here and I'm gonna make a shortened version because I know everybody's waiting to see the final poured bar. What I'm gonna do is redissolve this a second time, filter it, precipitate it, rinse it, and then get it into a crucible, get it melted, and pour the 25 troy ounce pure gold bar. Here we go. Wanted to give you a quick shot of the pure gold sponge or powder before we dissolve this a second time in Aqua Regia. Most folks never get to see gold in this form. All right, let's get right to it. I'm gonna start by pouring off this rinse water. All of this came from rinsing this gold. I had emptied my container here and uh, put it in my stock pot. So this was empty when I started doing these rinses. And as you can see, I've had about 10 liters of rinse water through this gold. We'll begin by adding 2,000 or so milliliters of hydrochloric acid. I'm going to fill it up to just below the 2 liter level with hydrochloric acid. I'm adding some sulfuric acid here to precipitate out any kind of lead that may have made it this far into the process should be nearly zero but we add it anyway as a precaution put it up on the heat here I haven't started the burner yet so it's it's cold I've got 200 milliliters just below 200 about 180 milliliters of nitric here 68% concentrated nitric I'm gonna pour about half of this in and we'll just let this kick it off and get started without any heat. For this second refining, I uh, added nitric acid and I couldn't get all the gold to go in solution. I kept adding more nitric acid and I ended up putting too much in. So I've got a whole bunch of excess nitric in with my gold solution now. Just got a few crumbs left in the bottom of the beaker there. I transferred the dissolved gold into this beaker as a temporary storage so we can get the rest of this to go into solution. Adding a little bit of nitric at a time until we get the rest of those crumbs of gold to dissolve. This is all brand new to me. New experience, you're watching me do it for the first time. Uh, this is a very large amount of gold and out of my experience level. Well, that took about five hours to get all that to go into solution. It's been allowed to cool slightly. And now what I'm gonna do is transfer all of the liquid into one beaker here. I'm going to place the uh, beaker with our gold solution in this bucket. Now we're going to add some ice to this and cool the beaker down to chill the solution.
the gold chilled down now to about uh, the temperature of a glass of cold iced tea. And now what we'll do is pour it through this filter and filter out any solids that we have in here. Here we go. This solution is crystal clear and bright with no traces of cloudiness. This indicates we're gonna have some high purity gold. I'm gonna transfer the chilled filtered solution into these beakers up here now. Okay, here's the right hand beaker. I'm gonna put the first spoon of sodium metabisulfite in. Here we go. Beaker, the one on the left, here we go. First spoon of sodium metabisulfite going in. spoon of SMB and you can see we got some excess nitric in here got lots of fumes being produced both of them's got excess nitric so this is gonna be fun getting all this uh, gold precipitated all right, I'm not gonna show the entire sequence here. I'm gonna add uh, ice to each of these and continue to uh, precipitate the gold. Obviously have some excess nitric in here. And so it's gonna take a while. So we'll just cool this down and continue precipitation. And then I'll come back after I've got all the gold dropped out of these solutions, and we'll go from there. You've already seen this entire process the first time around, so no need to show the same thing again. That took me about an hour to get all the gold to precipitate out of these solutions. It was a very unpleasant experience, and uh, this is what you can expect if you add too much nitric acid. I got too much nitric in there due to my inexperience with a large amount of gold. But they're all precipitated now. We'll let these settle. All right, man, we got us some nice pure gold here. I'm using boiling tap water to rinse the gold off. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. All the uh, chemicals have been rinsed off now. Beautiful brown pure gold powder. And uh, in this bucket up here, I've got all the rinses that I did. I did hydrochloric acid rinses. And I'm doing uh, boiling tap water rinses right now. And this bucket is nearly full. So it's taken five gallons. I think I used two gallons of hydrochloric to rinse all the chemicals off. And then I've been rinsing with uh, boiling tap water to get the rest of the smell to go away. And uh, this is looking real good, man. Just beautiful. 
just wanted to show that to you. It's just a really a beautiful sight after all this hard work. The gold came out looking real good. Here's a look at our pure gold sponge. Three nines fine. Pure gold. Now what we want to do is transfer this gold sponge into a dish here so that we can uh, dry it off real good. I'll be putting this uh, in a crucible so I've got to dry this off before I try to melt it because uh, there will be molten metal in the crucible as I add the gold to it. Obviously this volume of of metal will not fit in a crucible. Look at that, man. Gold came right on out real easy. Nothing left. Perfect. As I was saying, the gold is going to be going into a, uh, a crucible that will have molten metal in it. I can't put wet gold in there with molten metal. I run the risk of a steam explosion. So what we're going to do is I've got a, uh, let's see if I can get up here and get a shot of this. In here is a uh, casserole dish that's got some glass rods in the bottom of it. And it's full of water. And what I'm going to do now is the glass rods are there so that the uh, bottom of my gold drying pan here doesn't come in contact with the bottom of the uh, outer dish. The outer dish is in contact with the element and I don't want to put direct heat on this because it'll cause the gold to spatter out. After most of the water evaporated out of here I put it directly on the burner and I think we've got everything bone dry now. Let's take a look at this. Oh yeah. Dry powdered gold now. So what we'll do, we'll take this over here and set it up on our melt table. And what we're going to do is I'm going to start charging. I've got my furnace preheating. I'm going to start charging the crucible with the metal. I'm just going to carefully drop some chunks down in there. Do it real slow here. Just go nice and slow. All right, we're going to add some more metal to the furnace now. Just carefully spoon this in on top of the uh, metal that's already in there. This has been almost, almost uh, five hours, and I'm finally down to the last bit of metal here. I'm going to try to get this in the crucible now, and then uh, we should be ready to pour this in uh, about 30 minutes or so. Once all the metal is molten, and we've got... Uh, got it real hot almost there all right our
our charging metals ready. We're going to go ahead and heat our mold up now. Okay, here we go. I've decided that the safest way to do this is to just leave the crucible right in the furnace and pour the molten metal right from the furnace. Here we go. Okay, here's our bar of pure gold. It looks like it came out pretty good. There's a little bit of frosting on there where I hit the uh, hit the oxygen on the uh, torch, turned the oxygen off and blew some carbon on it. But uh, other than that, I think it's gonna be just fine. This bar and some water, get it cooled off so we can take a look at it. Good Lord, that thing's heavy. Man. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's going to have a scar on it where I put that carbon on there. Oh my goodness. Look at that joker. Holy cow. Wish I had to turn the torch off like that and put that carbon in there. But, oh my goodness. Look at this bar of gold. That thing is heavy. Let's go in and weigh it up and see what kind of weight we got on it now. All right, here's our 25 troy ounce pure gold bar. It's the biggest one I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Wish I hadn't torn that, uh, put that oxyacetylene torch right there and blew that carbon on there. We'd have a beautiful, nice finished bar. Oh, well, that doesn't hurt anything. Let's see what kind of weight we got. 767.1 grams. That's 24.6 troy ounces of pure gold fantastic well we pulled it off I've got a 24.6 troy ounce pure gold bar here uh, this refining exceeded the limits and capabilities of my small hobby operation here not to mention my experience level uh, you've seen in the video I uh, incorrectly shut off the oxygen on the oxyacetylene torch I was using to heat the mold and when I did that it uh, infused some carbon into the molten metal on top of the uh, bar that's not a problem that won't affect the purity of the rest of the bar this is high purity gold I'm glad this one's over and I will probably never do another large bar refining like this 
on my YouTube channel. Uh, this bar has already been sold. I have a buyer and it will be shipped out first thing in the morning. And uh, let's see what else. I guess that'll do it. This will conclude part five of the 25 Troy ounce pure gold bar refining series. Thank you for watching.